Hello and welcome to today's training. My name is Thomas Brayford, I'm an Admissions English Language Assessor at BPB University and today's training is going to be on issues in English language testing. So today we're going to look at a few issues affecting the speaking and the writing task. So security issues affecting both tasks, um, other issues affecting both tests and then some common examples of issues so we're going to use authentic examples and uh, we're going to look at them analyze them and then i'm going to give you a few problem situations and hopefully you'll think of a solution how to solve them okay so let's have a look at the speaking test Here are some common security issues for the speaking task. Some students read from pre-prepared notes. Other students memorize text for the speaking task. Some students take the test in a noisy or busy environment, making it difficult for the assessor to hear what's being said. Uh, and in some cases, there's another person other than the agents present in the room, which is not allowed. Here are some other issues affecting the speaking test. So sometimes the quality of the photos is very poor, so it's difficult for the person, the assessor or the interviewer to identify the student. So the test or the interview cannot take place because of this. Sometimes there are internet connection issues and they inhibit the assessor's ability to evaluate the student properly. The sound could be a little bit muffled or distorted and so it becomes difficult to pick words or, or phrases or even sentences out. Um, also, students um, sometimes not providing the correct <coughs> Skype ID slows the process down. Um, and finally, sometimes uh, there's poor and clear video. Maybe that's because of the um, webcam or what it could be because of the internet connection affecting the quality of video or sound. Okay, so we're going to look at some examples of some common issues affecting the speaking task. Uh, these are all examples of uh, interviews and tests we've had. Okay, so let's listen to the first example. So what's the problem? Sounds like you're reading, because you've repeated the same thing to me. Please do not read in this test. Listen to my questions and give me answers to my questions, okay? Okay, you can pause and discuss the problem. Okay, so the problem with the student was that the student was reading. They stumbled on the words Premier League, so it's an indication that they were reading. And the student was answering their own question. So they weren't listening to the assessor, they were just determined to plough on and um, deliver their answer to the assessor. 
Okay, so let's listen to the second example. Same question again. What is the problem? your friends use to talk about you and your personality? What? Uh, sorry? What? What? What would your friends say about you? For example, my friends say that I'm very funny. I'm a very funny person. I make them laugh. What about your friends? Yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm... Very funny person. Okay, and some other things about you? Okay, so please pause after listening and discuss. Okay, so the problem here was the student was constantly asking for examples and the assessor modelled some answers for the student to get an idea and the student copied the ideas of the assessor. So essentially the student wasn't producing anything themselves. So um, maybe the student wasn't properly prepared for the interview, wasn't ready, um, or wasn't tuned in. Okay, so let's listen to the final example. So again, the question, what's the problem? So after you've listened, pause and then discuss. So the student was not in a suitable environment to do the test. The background noise affected the assessor's ability to conduct the assessment. So it makes it very difficult to grade the student. With a lot of these listenings, uh, the audio can be the problem. So it's very important that you find a quiet room to do it and that you test all of your equipment before uh, doing it. So testing the mic, uh, making sure the computer's operating properly uh, and then the test should be okay. So what's the problem here? Please pause and discuss. Okay, so the passport is poorly scanned, the photo is obscured and the personal details are illegible. Makes it very difficult to identify the student. 
because I can't see clearly who it is and who's meant to be sitting the test. So please make sure that all documents and test papers are clearly scanned before sending them to the ELT team. This saves a lot of time. Okay, so let's move on to the writing task. Security issues affecting the writing task. Uh, students memorizing IELTS model answers. Maybe they've um, accessed an IELTS website and then just uh, memorized one of the example essays. There could be poor or no invigilation resulting in the student copying their essay from a website. Poor or no invigilation resulting in students using translators or dictionaries. Agents sending students writing tasks in advance, allowing students to prepare an answer. So they can polish an answer before actually um, doing the, the real thing. Okay, so other issues affecting the writing task. Students not properly reading the writing task and producing their own answer. So very important that uh, the student reads the question. What does it say? And answers the question directly. Also, students could be relying on um, set phrases um, and repeating these set phrases without having any focus without relating the sentences to the question. Also, poor scan scanning of the writing task can make it difficult uh, to read for the assessor. Okay, so here are some examples of some common issues affecting the writing task. So, in the first example, the student copied the text word for word from a blog entry on animal exploitation. Even the punctuation is the same as the blog entry. So, if we read it, you can already tell, really. Uh, nowadays, an increasing number of people are concerned about animal rights and whether we should give animals the rights as humans has recently caused a heated debate. So if we actually look at the website, the blog that it's from, we can see it's the same thing. So nowadays an increasing number of people are concerned about animal protection and animal rights. However, whether we should utilise animals for human purposes has caused heated debate recently. Okay, so a little bit has been changed, but basically word for word it's the same thing. Okay, in the next one, the student uses phrases like, it is widely acknowledged that every coin has two sides. The student tries to make such set phrases fit without considering if they make sense. So other such phrases could be, in a nutshell, since the beginning of time, last but not least, miss the boat, think out of the box. So obviously the, the students learnt this phrase in class and has thought, I absolutely need to use it and I'll do whatever I can to, to make it fit, which is not a good approach to, to essay writing. Okay, in this next one, sus suspicions were raised because the student uses language and structures in the writing test which were not evident in the speaking test. So if we look at the text, thirdly, modern technology in the workplace contributes to utmost level of stress and is considered to be the silent killer. So quite nicely put, but if we listen to the speaking, the student isn't really able to produce the same complex sentences. 
let's have a listen. The audio quality is pretty poor, but if you listen intently, you'll probably hear. Okay, so I don't know if you could hear all that, but a lot of the sentences are very um, simple and re he repeats the same phrases with slightly different words. In the next one, the student uses dictionary style definitions in their essay to answer a question about global warming. Such a definition or quote shouldn't be present in an English language test. We're looking for the student to express their own point of view. By all means, they should back this up, but it should be a text that's written by them. So let's have a little look at this. Global warming occurs when carbon dioxide and other air pollutants and greenhouse gases uh, collect in the atmosphere and absorb light and solar radiation blah 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 as you can see this definition is quite scientific and is definitely not the work of the students okay let's look at a few scenarios that could occur so after every one you can pause and discuss have a think about them in the next slide, I will then discuss the answers. So, number one. Lee has a writing and reading test on the 29th and 9th, 2018 at 9 o'clock, invigilated via Skype. When should she be sent the papers? Number two. Lucas asks the invigilator if he can check a word in the dictionary. How should the invigilator respond? Number three. Juliana has asked her agent if it's okay to memorize answers to four general topics for a speaking test. How should the agent respond? Okay, so for question number one, Lee should be sent papers uh, at five to nine so that she has time to print them off. The invigilator should be able to see this happening. So Lee will already have a camera switched on and she won't have any extra time to prepare for reading or writing she will be able to do the, the test under test conditions number two the invigilator should remind the student that this is an official test and that uh, dictionaries or translators are not allowed Number three, the agent should advise that it's not okay to memorize answers. It's better to practice essay styles, so to practice writing, to get used to writing, but to always read the question. If the student is used to writing, then the student will develop a good writing style and get used to a good structure for written word. Okay, I'm going to read question four to six. And if you can pause 
and discuss after every question. So Abbas has a Skype invigilation for his writing and reading test. His internet connection is rather weak. What should the invigilator do? Number five. Fazana has a Skype invigilation but does not have a working webcam. What should the invigilator do? Number six. It's a busy day at the agent's office and nobody's available to invigilate Matthew's test. Should the test still go ahead? So in question four, Abbas has a rather weak internet connection. So if it cuts out for prolonged periods, the uh, invigilator will not be able to go on with the test. So then it will have to be rescheduled and Abbas next time will sit new papers, new reading and writing papers. If the internet connection isn't that bad, if it cuts out and then they're able to reconnect very quickly, then it could be possible to proceed and to complete that test. Uh, in number five, Fazana doesn't have a webcam on a computer, so she is doing um, a writing test, maybe, or a reading test. If she's doing a writing or reading test, um, then it will be possible to do it using a mobile phone or a tablet or an iPad if she has those or she'll have to use a different computer. If she can't do any of those things then she'll have to go to the agent's office. <laughs> okay, um, in number six it's a busy day at the agent's office and nobody's available to invigilate Matthew's test. The test should definitely not go ahead because Matthew should not be left to his own devices to get on with things. It's important to schedule this test when people have time to invigilate Matthew. This is a serious test. It's used for admissions purposes. It's used to uh, get the visa. So it's important that um, people follow procedure correctly. Okay, so some action points to take away from this training. Always read the content of emails sent by the BPP ELT team or any other email sent by BPP University. They all contain important information and it's important that you follow them for efficiency and just to get things right. Carefully study the ELT guidelines before any test so that you are familiar with the test procedures. Also make sure the student's familiar with the test procedures too. Ensure that all tests, uh, including OPT reading writing, are properly invigilated. If the student does the test via Sky, make sure the completed scripts are promptly sent to you. So don't let it drag on. If once the student's finished, get them to send the tests. Okay, so here's a list of useful resources. There's a video on how to avoid plagiarism, which is on YouTube. Uh, we can also send you uh, invigilation guidelines. If you're an agent, you should already have these, but if you don't, contact us and we will send these to you. Also, there are guidelines that can be shared with the student about the ELT test rules to prepare them for the test and also strategies for speaking, reading, writing and OPT if uh, the student isn't familiar with IELTS or hasn't done any kind of English written test before they may be useful to the student. Finally there are ELT practice papers for reading and writing also speaking I believe and that if the student wishes there are OPT practice tests that they can do too. 
Okay, so that's the end of today's presentation and training. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you have any further questions, please get in touch. Thank you.